எனக்கு கொஞ்சம் கொஞ்சம் கிட்ட வந்து தெரியும் ஏன்னா பேச முடியாது என்ன மாத்திர பேச தெலுங்கு அதுக்கு தான் நான் இங்கிலீஷில் பேசுகிறேன் இப்போ அவங்க வசூக்கி ட்ரான்ஸ்லேட் பண்ணுவாங்க மீட்டிங் கோமஸ்ரீதர் மெம்பர் ஆஃப் அவர் பொலிட் பியூரோ மை கொலீக் கோமஸ் ஜி ராமகிருஷ்ணன் secretary of the tamil nadu state committee comrade balakrishnan k balakrishnan members of the central committee that are uh, here on the dais comrade t k rangarajan comrade k varadarajan comrade sondarajan comrade vasuki and all the leaders of the tamil nadu state committee on the dais and the leaders of the six jathas which have converged here today at trichy and my dear brothers and sisters First of all, at the outset, I would like to congratulate the Tamil Nadu State Committee of the CPIM for organizing such a massive campaign of contact with the people and taking up the issues of the people and understanding their problems so that this is the basis for future struggles. The, the reason why the CPIM conducts such activities is that we are a party which have a alternative policy framework which is a pro people policy framework which we think is the only way in which we can build a better india and we can build a better livelihood for all our people are particularly our working people and it's because of this policy alternative and because of the struggles on these alternative policies that the cpm is targeted by all our class enemies but in tamil nadu you have conducted such a big program and it is to intensify the struggles for this alternative policy framework and that is what the cpim says what the country needs today is not leader what the country needs today is policies so in the elections that are going to come people are saying who will it be narendra modi and who in the opposite side they said people of india do not choose between leaders people of india will choose on the basis of policies and those policies the people's oriented policies that have been highlighted during this jathas today the problems that we are facing as in india tamil nadu is facing similar problems as part of india you see our youth today two thirds of our population consists of your youth and they are moving around aimlessly because of growing unemployment Mr Prime Minister Modi promised to create 2 crore jobs every year in these 5 years instead of the 10 crore jobs created you actually have today the labor bureau of the government own labor bureau says there is a decline in the organized sector and employment the the informal sector has been shattered due to demonetization your gst implementation has ruined your MSME and the small scale industry sector these are the sectors that used to give employment to crores of our people now all that has been ruined the future of india today as a result of the policies that are being pursued by this government looks very bleak for the vast majority this has to change if this has to change these policies have to change and if the policies have to change the government that is continuing to proceed on these policies must be removed from power and there on that basis an alternative policy direction must be given to our country that is why today your own tamil nadu the government itself the state government estimates that more than 50000 of the small scale industries have today closed down after this demonetization of gst more than 5 lakh jobs were lost in this sector alone in tamil nadu and all over the country you have a farmers distress continuing to grow and farmers suicides continuing to grow you are seeing the impact of this price rise of all the petroleum products including cooking gas and this is impacting not only crores of people who use this but it is also leading to a whole scale inflationary spiral being unleashed in the country and that is why here in tamil nadu after coming here yesterday when i told in delhi some of the some of the people there that i am going to tamil nadu today they were asking me the question 
who is the government in Tamil Nadu? Who is running the government in Tamil Nadu? There is no vote of confidence taken in the assembly. Today the High Court has given a judgment where two judge bench, both judges have differed with each other with opposite views. This will continue. Today Tamil Nadu government today that is running the state is today the classic, the single remote control government in the country where the remote control is in the hands of the Prime Minister Modi and this government acts according to those directions. This is not the government of the people of Tamil Nadu, but this is the government acting at the behest of this government in Delhi. That is why today this is confirmed also when I visited Thutukuri after that firing on the Sterlite uh, company issue. What did we find there? The sniper pistols that are used, they are fitted with silencers. And every single person in the hospital who is injured told us that they could not hear any gunfire. The firing was done on the chest or in the head. So the firing was done to kill, not to control the protest. But these guns are never used, cannot be used without authorization in any civilian conditions. Who gave that authorization? Who gave that authorization for the police, local police here, to use these sniper rifles and sniper, uh, the sniper guns? This is something that needs to be established. This cannot happen unless this has been given by the center. This can only be established if you have a judicial inquiry by a sitting judge of the Supreme Court of India, whereby you can establish who gave this order. And this we have to understand instead, therefore, the silence of the Prime Minister. He has not said one word. Thirteen people have been shot dead. There is not one word by the Prime Minister. But he has the time to show his physical fitness videos. The Prime Minister, please keep maintain your health. But we want the health of the Indian people. We want the health of the Indian country. And that is more important than your personal health. Please maintain your personal health, but not at the cost of killing my own brothers and sisters by using these police bullets. But why do I say this? Now, this is what is, needs to be investigated also. Why were these guns sanctioned for this protest? Why were this uh, firing took place without any prior warning? Why, didn't, why were all the rules flouted in controlling such agitations? There is a connection that also needs to be probed. That is why a high-level judicial inquiry is required. The company Vedanta, Sterlite company owned by Vedanta, Vedanta is the largest donator of funds to the political parties and to the two major political parties in the country. As long as the UPA government was there, the Congress party benefited. Before that government fell and since then till now, the major donations have gone to the BJP. The, this Modi government has brought through clandestinely an amendment, a retrospective amendment to the Indian law which, which permits foreign companies to donate to Indian political parties. This was not permitted, but they have now brought it with retrospective effect so that they will not be penalized by the, because of the law that no political party can take foreign donations. Now this sort of an amendment that is brought was to protect the donations Vedanta gave to the BJP. Is that a reason and factor for this sort of a action that was taken in Thutukuri? If this has to be established, you require a high level per judicial inquiry and that is absolutely essential. That is why we see today a very close nexus between this Modi government and big industrial houses in our country. If the road has to be laid today, an eight-lane road in, uh, in Tamil Nadu, that is very closely associated with the needs of the Jindal group who wants, who have uh, got a big mining interest. Whether today all the public sector is being decimated and privatized, you are facing in Tamil Nadu, the BHEL unit here is not getting the orders because of which we have, it has been told that nearly 400 
down the line ancillary production units are today being closed down and as a result lakhs have lost their jobs and you see in the loot that is taking place of our of our money in our banks by people like nirav modi etc and i we never knew there were so many modis in india you have a lalit modi you have a nirav modi you have a narendra modi and all of them are looting our country's money and when you are about to cash them they leave the country and, and go away and this government doesn't do anything 11.5 lakh crores of rupees is the unpaid loans including interest that this big corporates have taken but this government says it does not have money to give our farmers who are committing distress suicide a one time debt waiver so that they can live and they need they are not pushed into committing suicides that is the nature of this government that we have today it, if a better india has to be created better livelihood of our people have to be created these policies have to be changed which means that immediately this government has to go and people struggles must establish the alternative policy direction but when the people are rising in struggles demanding alternative policies if today out of this 11.5 lakh crores of rupees even if half of that is recovered we can provide every youth in india with education with good health and with employment there are no dearth of resources in our country we can give our farmers a better livelihood we can give a better price for the produce of our farmers there is no shortage of money in india what is the shortage is of correct pro people policies that is why this money has to be recovered used for people's welfare and that is when we can stop and reverse what is happening today 1% of the indian population today controls or owns the assets equivalent to 73% of our country's gdp 1% the rich are getting richer the poor are getting poorer and these policies has to be first stopped by removing this government and then reversed through people's struggles simultaneously they are mounting a very severe attack on our constitutional order and our republican character this communal polarization is targeting directly the muslim minorities and the dalits the atrocities against the dalits are continuing to multiply today it is reported that yesterday three dalit boys were beaten to death because they dared to go and try and use the water from an upper caste area as well in maharashtra and this is happening all across the country you in tamil nadu are know how these atrocities have been rising and how the cpm has been fighting against that but these atrocities that continue to grow <coughs> the communal attacks and polarization <coughs> that are taking place all over the country is the reflection of the worst vote bank politics being played by the bjp of consolidating the hindutva communal vote bank and through this they are distorting our country's educational educational system institutions today hindu mythology has become the study of indian history the prime minister himself says that lord ganesha was created through plastic surgery or karna was born as a test tube baby and now the bjp tripura chief minister says we had wifi in in the days of mahabharata and that is how sanjay uvacha he was telling gujarashtra how and what was happening in the war i mean absurd claims and unscientific claims are being made the effort is to convert indian history not as a history of the people but as the his, as the history of hindu mythology and as a result they are trying to garner votes in the name of ram they tell the story of ramayana but they forget mahabharata in mahabharata remember the same thing like what the rss bjp are saying today the kaurava said that we are 100 brothers the pandavas are only five brothers so we will fight and finish the pandavas out of the four out of the 100 kaurava brothers how many names do you know 
Can you remember the names of other than two? Can you remember the names of these uh, Kaurava brothers? Duryodhana and Dushashan. After that, nobody knows. Today in BJP, Narendra Modi, Amit Shah. After that, there is nobody there. And like it happened in uh, the Mahabharata, the five member Pandava brothers are sufficient to defeat the hundred brothers Kaurava army and that is going to happen and in the end what happened in Mahabharata? We must tell them along with the story of Ramayana you also read the story of Mahabharata. Those who unleashed the war, the entire Kuruvansha got destroyed in Mahabharata. If you are going the way you are going, the BJP RSS, must, BJP must remember, in Mahabharata also, the Kaurava brothers had a mama. You know the mama, Shakuni mama. And today the BJP has its Shakuni mama, the RSS. That is controlling the whole show and, and that is what is creating the problem and they will meet the same fate like they met in Mahabharata. So the country will be guided. If, if you want to be guided by a mythological story, People will be guided by Mahabharata to defeat the evil which is today represented by this central government and the RSS and not by their polarization that they are seeking in the name of their Hindutva ideology that is destroying the unity and integrity of our country. That's why apart from these attacks on the livelihood of the people and the loot of our country, this communal polarization that is destroying the secular democratic character of the Indian Republic and the efforts to impose a, a very rapidly intolerant Hindutva Rashtra of their conception, attacking the minorities in Dalits. This government is also today attacking all institutions of parliamentary democracy. It is unheard of. Today, at this very moment, the elected chief minister of Delhi is sitting in a dharna outside the lieutenant governor's office in Delhi. Lieutenant governor is the central government's representative. The central government is not allowing any of these opposition rule states to function. It's happening in your neighbor, neighboring Pondicherry. Even there, the elected government is not being allowed to be functioned through the lieutenant governor. They tried. They, they have been trying to practice a new th formula. The BJP will lose elections but they will form the government. They did that in Manipur, they did that in Goa, they did that in Meghalaya, they came back through the back door in Bihar after losing elections. In Karnataka also they tried to do that. That was foiled by the secular parties who got together there to stop the BJP from doing it. So this attack on, on the constitutional institution has now come to the election commission. All the Chief Election Commissioners alive have gone to the present Chief Election Commissioner and said that the integrity and impartiality of the Election Commission today has come under a question mark. This Election Commission must restore it because of various partial decisions it has taken, including fixing the dates for Gujarat Assembly elections, etc., etc. Now what has come out? Since this BJP government came at the center, the annual accounts being given to the Election Commission does not carry the signature of BJP's treasurer. Last year, they procured or collected more than 1,000 crores of rupees officially. But this is submitted without any authorized signature. But the Election Commission for the last four years has not inquired into it. These are serious lapses where you've seen how the judiciary and the Supreme Court, the four senior judges have revolted against the interference of the government and the executive. So parliamentary democracy is under a very big authoritarian attack today. And this is denying people their democratic rights to rise in protest and organize against the policies of this government. This has to end and that can only happen through a powerful people's movement and struggles against what is happening in our country today. That is why finally, 
I am appealing to you all here and to you to the people of Tamil Nadu that we all have to join together in the struggle to change the policy direction in our country. And if that has to be done, the first priority has to be to uh, oust this government at the center and the proxies of this government that you have in Tamil Nadu right now, go, uh, governments like that, they have to be removed from, from the government so that the struggles for these alternative policies can proceed further. So Tamil Nadu has a very glorious history. You have fought against all sorts of discrimination in the past. And people of India look towards Tamil Nadu to see how the policies of social discrimination and, uh, and social oppression will be fought. And that, that struggle has to intensify. So you will contribute to this countrywide struggle that is going on apart from bringing back a people's government in Tamil Nadu, a government that the people choose and a people-oriented government, you will also join this larger struggle for the sake of saving India today so that we can all together create a better India tomorrow. And in that struggle, my appeal to all of you is to please join in larger numbers for the sake of our country, for the sake of our people, and for the sake of our own children and the future. So with the confidence that you'll all join in larger numbers and together we'll create a better Tamil Nadu and a better India. With that confidence, I take a leave of all of you. Thirimbi, Ungal Gallarakum, Vanakam.